do you want to know the trick of taking this heat pump from 238% efficiency all the way up to 437% efficiency? Well, you should stick around and watch this video because the trick is so simple that every single person watching it can do this. Make sure you subscribe, leave me your criticisms in the comments as I know you will and give this video a like or not. Now let's go inside because as much as I like standing by a heat pump in the garden acting like a weirdo talking to myself it's a lot warmer inside. In the last video I got rebuked a lot of people saying how on earth is your system so inefficient? Well we need to do a lot more diving into the figures on this app so I'm going to show you everything behind the scenes so you can see a clearer picture because I only showed you a little snapshot of when it was particularly cold and particularly high humidity as well. So the heat pump was doing a lot of defrost cycles that kills efficiency. So let's rewind. Last time we left off on November the 21st, on that day we used a whopping 41.7 kilowatt hours and the efficiency was right down at 2.38, a cop of 2.38 or expressed in another way 238% efficient. So if we look at that week in particular, that was November the 17th to the 23rd, 190 kilowatt hours of electricity consumed at a COP for that week of 2.87. If we look at the week prior to it, we only used 50.9 kilowatt hours at a COP of 4.34. And I don't know why the Valent app is doing that to me today. And the week before that, 50.7 kilowatt hours of electricity consumed, a COP of 4.24. Now let's bring you right up to date today, okay? This week so far, 3.28, and let's tune in on the last whole day that we've got. Today is the 28th. Yesterday, November the 27th, we used 9.6 kilowatt hours of electrical energy, and we achieved a COP of 4.36. So what is my tip for you newbies with a heat pump? When it gets cold, that's when heat pump owners, especially new ones, are looking and scrutinizing the figures and they are panicking and they are freaking out. And I've seen it on all of the groups online, all of the discussion, I've fitted a heat pump, my bills are so high, I can't believe it. The first tip is stop looking at just one day, stop looking at just one week, perhaps even one month you need to get some averages, you need to get some perspective. If I zoom out and look at the month of November, despite it being a colder than average November and quite a snap, my COP for that month is 3.38. Yeah, there's room for improvement, but the long time watchers know I've got micro bore and a buffer tank, and my system is a compromise system in terms of efficiency. If we look at October, for example, 3.61. It's better to look over the long term rather than hyper focus on one particular day. Let's go back into November and I will show you some of the uh, nitty gritty details. So if I go for the 27th, our last full day, and if we open up on the tab that everyone seemed to like, this one, because it was getting so cold, I actually turned the heat pump from the eco mode for the domestic hot water, I turned it back to standard mode so that it had more time throughout the night to be heating the property. Less time uh, heating the hot water and more time feeding the heat, heat into the house. So you can see on the 27th, relatively stable uh, internal temperature. You can see for most of that, we're at 19 or 20 degrees. It drops a little bit during, during the hot water cycle, but we're all asleep at that time. And then you can see outdoor temperature. We started the coolest point here at, what's that? That's around 10 degrees and then up to 13 degrees. So 27th, not exactly a taxing day. Um, if we go back to the 21st, on that day, you can see we had hours at the design, or pretty much my design temperature is minus two degrees. So that's really what the system is designed to work in that kind of operating window. For the naysayers out there, yes, if my system gets to minus five, I've got plenty of headroom that I can push the system and still keep the house at 21 degrees, no problem at all. But also those design, uh, those design parameters are considering that it will be 
minus two degrees for an extended period, not that it will just be minus two for six, 12 hours. The uh, thermal mass of the building is still very high, so it takes a long time for the temperature to decline. Anyway, on that day, we used more than 40 kilowatt hours. And I know a lot of people are saying, how on earth did you manage to survive the day on that cheap rate when you only have 20 kilowatt hours of battery? Well, let's go into my solar inverter here. We're gonna to go to the 21st and you can see that we finished the day with 12% in the battery remaining of the state of charge. Now, how did we survive the day? Well, on that day, we got 5.5 kilowatt hours from the solar. We also have Octopus Intelligent Go that started at eight o'clock, just after eight o'clock. So um, we were on the cheap rate from that period as well. Octopus are really doing us a solid this winter. In addition to that, you can see a huge amount of the load was done before 5.30, which again is in the cheap rate. So you, I only needed the 20, my phone may need a reset because it is on one today, isn't it? I only needed to utilize my battery capacity from 5.30 a.m. up until about 8 p.m. In the previous video, loads of you complaining that I'm basing my calculations on seven pence per kilowatt hour. That's fine. I'm showing you how many kilowatt hours you can do the sums for yourself. I'm sure you're capable of that. The questions in the comments would, what about what would I do if I didn't have battery storage? Well, last winter and the winter before, I had no battery storage. That was a reality for me. The first winter, I didn't even have solar panels at all. The second winter, I had solar panels. This third winter, heat pump, solar panels, and battery. So I can, show, I can demonstrate in my previous videos how you can survive and save a lot of money just running a heat pump without solar and battery, then with solar, and now with solar and battery. What would I do now in the winter of 2025, 2026, if I didn't have solar and battery? Well, there's two things that I would look at. Number one is Octopus Agile. I would see and see if I can make the settings work for that. And you can really uh, game the system, work your heat pump hard when the rates are really low. Last winter, there were lots of periods where, in fact, it was minus, uh, that, that means that you're being paid to use the energy. There's excess energy in the grid. So we were using as much of that as we could and overpowering the heat pump at those times. And when it got really expensive, we turned the heat pump off. Pretty much 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. every day, we'd leave the heat pump off and then we'd just ride through because we'd warm the building right up, sometimes 23, 24, 25 degrees in the cheap period and then let it cool down in the more expensive periods. If you're not with Octopus, I don't know why you wouldn't. My referral link's down there, of course, as always, you get 50 pounds, I get 50 pounds. Ovo offer an interesting tariff, which is suitable for valent owners like myself. And basically they charge 15 pence per kilowatt hour, 24 seven. Anything that is used by the heat pump, it's half the price of a normal kind of price cap tariff. So you can still make huge savings compared to a gas boiler just by going on the OVO Heat Pump Plus tariff. Um, there's so many options out there. That's the one thing that electrification really brings that we don't talk about as much, or at least on this channel I don't talk about as much. It gives you so much more flexibility and it gives you a broader range of options. Yes, you can bring solar panels and batteries into the mix, there's no way that you can do that with gas. You can't get gas cheaper on you know, a nighttime tariff or anything like that. You can't store it to use it later. You can't generate your own gas like you can with solar panels. So these things all intertwine and they give you the flexibility and they give you, they kind of put you at the driving wheel so you can make your own decisions of how you want to use energy, either for better comfort or for a lower cost. I've rambled on for long enough. So did you like my tip, my number one tip of how to get good efficiency on a heat pump? <laughs> Be patient. I've got loads of other videos where I actually do talk through proper tweaks and tips and tricks and optimizing your weather compensation curve. You can go back and see some of those previous videos if you're interested in that. 
Otherwise, thank you for watching. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and I am sure I will receive comments to the extent of the, the length of war and peace, because I know what you lot are like. Everyone's a critic these days. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a critic. That's what helps the engagement. Goodbye.